Hey everyone, welcome to the Hobby Streakers episode 2, no, season 2, episode 6, <laughs> I was gonna say, episode 6 of season 2, um, as always, my host, Liam, how's it Hello. going, how's it going, good? It's, it's going. It's going, alright. It's going. It's Monday, which is weird. It is Monday, it is not Tuesday. Which is super weird for us. Uh, it's got the same base, that's a problem. Yeah, I've had a change of hours at work and therefore everything is different. Well, it's fine. It's well, fine. We worked out that Mondays are actually better anyway, so... Kind of. <laughs> we'll see. So but... nobody's complaining. Nope. Just yet. No, we're, we're good. Alright, I'm gonna... Oh jeez. Um. So you are currently on one thousand seven hundred eighty-two days of hobby streak. I am currently on six hundred and fourteen. So now hobby streak is doing thirty minutes of hobby every day. So. Uh, as always, we are going to paint something today. What are you going to paint? I'm painting some Mark III apothecaries that I have given jump packs to. Okay, cool. So they are for my uh, Horus Heresy army that I'm currently looking to take to an event in three weeks three weeks i will say three weeks cool so yeah with with the uh the whole edition changeover um a lot of a lot of war gear options and and stuff disappeared from things that i was taking in one of the lists that i've got stuff okay. together for so, uh, so you need to readjust. Points. I had some points spare, so um, the last few weeks I've been running a, a version of the list where I borrowed a character from my Thousand Sons army, and um, I used the, the Axe Praetor from the Age of Darkness box as a what do I use him as? I used him as a Legion champion. Okay. Cool. So, uh, upon playing a few games, I decided that spending like 200 points on a uh, a character that sits in a plane and doesn't do anything was probably not, not the right move. Ideal. So I've decided to invest those points in something that will keep the units that are going to be on the table around for longer. Alright. Seems like Hence, a good two time. space doctors. <laughs> Alright. Cool. And I've just noticed that they are on almost the same base as well. So they're, they're going to be Fairly identical. Cool. What did I do with his? I did a lot more fine down on his. Alright, well. Well, I'm gonna paint this dude for Space Station Zero. Which yeah. I've been working on a crew for that. Um Still not sure what crew. <laughs> so right now I've been painting those that are pretty much, I'm not going to say generic, but the ones that you can find in almost all the lists. Because uh, you can f choose what type of sheep, well ship, not sheep, but ship you want. And uh, I still again don't know where I'm going to go with that. Uh, so right now I got a medical officer, my captain, and now I am going to do a soldier, which Ooh, I believe 
believe soldiers are in most of the lists. I will need to double check. And I've been going... I've been having fun with those and going sci-fi movies in general and TV shows and stuff. So my medical officer basically looks like Zoidberg. He's got a tentacle face. My commander or captain uh, looks like Kirk and his name is Dirk because he looked like a dorky Kirk and uh, my soldier with his uh, rat face will actually be turned into a raccoon face and he's gonna look like a uh, raccoon rocket. Rocket, raccoon. rocket raccoon from uh, Marvel and so then I don't know <laughs> I will have to go into well one kind of look like a Borg he's got the the eye thingy on his so I'm probably gonna go for Borg look uh, now the problem is I saw that basically my soldier somehow well cuz I did 2 4 6 8 10 12 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I got 18 uh, figures that I did from the box, uh, from the Stargrave box, and so, and then I put them on basis, and I realized that somehow my, the soldier I wanted to paint today, and my medical officer were on exactly the same base, where there are quite a few different ones, so I just pop him out, and put him on a new one but it's not drying god damn it anyways um so let's see our shutouts so i actually do have... well, you've actually done something this week <laughs> yes i've done something this week uh so my shoutouts santiago close 600 days uh, Chin, Squid Game Cat, 1,400 days. So he's trolling Woo! you. Mick. By, oh, Mick. Yeah, Mick is trolling you by about a year behind you. 380, yeah, a little bit more than a year behind you. So, but he's getting there. And then uh, Wolfie. On 200 days. That's the one I saw recently. I actually went back like for the past three, four days, I think. So if you received uh, three, four likes, it's because I went back three, four days and just went through the list. I actually had time for once to actually do that. It's been, yeah, it's been crazy. Yeah. This weekend so, we actually moved a whole bunch of stuff uh, from storage back into the garage and from the garage into storage which was so yeah yay so my ones over on instagram land we've got one one bad monkey 100 days and we've got zach dark arts lipier 71 and sam's mail on 600 days okay. and then we've got iron waffle minis and vangelis central on one year cool Good job. Big thumbs. And now I get to scroll down. So, what have I painted or done in the last two weeks? Well, less than Quite a little a bit. bit, little bit less than two weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> two weeks minus one day. So, in the last thirty, it you didn't change it to say thirteen, 13 days. days. <laughs> <laughs> so this is on you. <laughs> yeah, I should have. Uh, so what did you do? So I what have you done? Built two dreadnought drop pods. I built the last basic drop pod for my list. I tidied and applied squad markings to a storm eagle that I started last year. Uh, so good job, me. Um, I finished painting the first drop pod, regular drop pod. I built the third Death Storm drop pod, 
Okay. I've finished the contempt that I've got sat here, uh, apart from the arms, but the main body is done. But the arms are all magnetized, so. Uh, I built up the Volkite Moritat, so this this trap here, oh, yeah. and the two jump apothecaries, and I painted the Moritat, and I've done this guy up to here. So this guy is who's that, um, who's that Pokemon? Oh no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> it's Pikachu. Um, this is um, Gabriel Angelos. And Gabriel, so, really? Gabriel uh, yeah. Angel Angel Gabriel. Yes. Yes. Alright. 40k is nothing if not subtle. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very subtle. <laughs> so he is the only model in the Warhammer Forty Thousand character series. Um, he's the chapter master of the blood angels from the dawn of war games um and i went that's a guy in big terminator armor with a big hammer if i buy him and spend a couple of hours scraping all of the 40k stuff off of his shoulder pads and his chest and his greaves and his cloaks and his cape then you can make a Then I 30K. can put some uh, brass etching and transfers on him, and then he can be a Iron Warrior. So okay. I've done that. And I started painting him. Kid bashing. Kind of, yeah. Cool. So the, the only downsides that I've come so far with that is that I've nicked my fingertips so many times with my knife oh, that's just okay. scraping stuff off yep. not not enough to like draw blood but enough that the skin's coming off in certain places oh, that sucks yeah um, but yeah it, it looks not terrible ok cool um, so, so a bit more paint on that you're happy with Tied your you're happy with your transformation? Yeah. With your customization? Um, I, I was slightly um, disappointed in how many pieces the kit comes as. Okay. Why? So seven pieces. Too many or not enough? Not enough. Not enough? Not enough. So we've got... Ah, uh, so you cannot just like... Pull up like an arm yeah. or a, a hand or so something. So we've got that you two just, yeah. two pieces yeah, here. Yeah, I see what you mean. Okay. For the for the scenic base. So like the the Primark series, the he's got a, a base, a display base that you can slot him in and out of. Except he doesn't slot in and out or out of this one. He slots in, and then you can't get the back half on properly. So, hmm. Hmm. And then it's. That's two. Then there's the the base that he stood on on his gaming base. The main body. Uh, the hammer head. And the hammer shaft. Okay. And one, for, one forearm. So I, I would have liked um, a couple more pieces. Purely from a, a, a kit bashing and converting standpoint, so I had better angles to get in and scrape stuff off. Yeah, and I'm guessing they're like this because they need to for uh, for um, mold reason and all this optimizing yeah, just and all to this. Cast yeah, it. well, and and this is the thing. So that's something that I've seen with, um, and I think that comes with knowledge more than anything else of mold making and things like this is um, most company will cut the pieces like arms, torso, blah, 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 head. And then you see things like GW. And when I build a Curse City, like some models, they had like the head, the neck, an arm, 
a leg, half of the torso, yeah. the backpack, and and then it's like, and then you just try to fit the other piece on top of it, and then it's just, but they're cut like yeah, they're cut in a weird way, but. And and this is the thing I'm guessing those are the optimal ways for mold making and everything, to have the most detail, with the least amount of uh, tooling to be done, or yeah. changed. While while the tooling is is uh, making the mold. Yeah, that that the least amount of space. Yeah. Um, on the sprue as going well. Going to waste yeah. on the sprue. Yeah and and the mold and everything like yeah i think i think they're just like yeah, optimizing so much that so much more than than other others because they've done that for so long and you can you start seeing it um in uh, uh marvel crisis protocol for uh, atomic my game they were starting to do that as well mm. where you had some uh some like the the big um uh, Elk Buster was weirdly also like pieced together, yeah. but they have less pieces, less tiny little pieces. That was a big complaint at the beginning from them. Um, so they have less of that and more, uh, and a lot more like big piece that just cover. A lot of different planes yeah. of cut so yeah cool what else uh, apart, apart from that I had the uh, which took my, you my... is that just one uh, one day or did it took you more than one sitting to fully customize your uh, I, I, I did that in one evening I got I, I washed all the, the parts before I went to work and then I got back and I was like, oh, bored don't really want to sit around and watch TV or play Xbox or whatever, so I will just crack on with that. So I got my knife out and just started put some music on and started scraping. Cool. Mm. Uh, I got my um, battle foam for my uh, drop pod list through today as well. So mm. I've got storage foam, so I can take these drop pods to events without them rattling around and breaking. So, as, as much as I'm a proponent of uh, magnetizing infantry, mm -hmm. uh, can't really do that on things that don't have bases. True. And well, can you my... can you not drill on the bottom, or are you gonna get no. into the pod? Yeah. Oh, okay, so there's not even like a like enough of a. Enough yeah, and, of and a so piece, some yeah. of them are like really heavy and don't have like proper contact points for that sort of thing and mm. so like all my heresy stuff is in foam because like even the infantry have got solid resin bases mm -hmm. so i don't want to have to spend approximately 13 years of my life digging um drilling magnet holes out of the bases of what is uh, I've got two forties, two tens, is sixty. Uh, two tens of breaches is seventy, eighty, and then three sets of yeah. I've got a hundred and ten plus um, infantry. Wow! So that's a yeah. lot. That that would take approximately forever, and fuck that. And probably another day. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna go for no. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. So, but uh, unfortunately, the um, the dreadnought drop pod tray mm -hmm. that uh, battle foam cell is for the old Forge World dreadnought drop pods. Okay, so that one does not fit, I'm guessing. Uh, the new Dreadnought drop pods are about an inch taller. Of course they are. So, my... I, I then... I figured out that the, the tray, you're supposed to sit them lying flat. Okay. 
but if you stand them up in the bottom of the the delta okay then this yourself then, then they they go in the bottom of that but they peek out like an inch out over the top okay so i've got a case that i will put the foam in to take places and the three trays that i've got for the drop pods have uh will go in that big case with like four or five inches clearance okay on the top so this is going going to be like my um my big dumb playing list that i'm playing at the moment it's going to end up being a two case army all right so all my infantry is going to have to go in a smaller case and then all my drop pods will go in the big case Mm-hmm. And I could just roll up to to events with a, a a stack of cases that's about four foot high, and just go, <laughs> "Hey, they, these are all my toys." This is my yeah. army. You will bow yeah. before me. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm going to be doing that uh, at the event on the sixteenth. So uh, cool. Uh, not the drop pods because um, we had an FAQ out for for heresy uh, last week, Uh-oh. and it addressed addressed some really really minor things, and none of the less minor things that people were actually asking about. So I was uh, like, "Yeah, cool, awesome, great. thanks, great, good job." That that really helps. So, I'm guessing that's just stuff from internal playtests and stuff, and they haven't actually started looking at the the community submitted stuff yet oh, until they've got so. all the books out, and then they'll just do a big pass all at once, mm. which is a, a pain, but. The, the event that I'm going to is is playing the books um, as is. So without, I think I mentioned this. With the, or the other, without the FAQ, then uh, with with the FAQ. Okay. But um, there are a number of things that people are asking questions about that rules as written don't work. But um, any sensible person would look at and go. That should work. <laughs> so, like, in in, I've got two examples from my army. So, iron warriors can take; um, they can swap their bolters or bolt pistols and heavy bolters for shrapnel bolters. Okay. So, um, a unit of terminators is armed with combi bolters. Now, combi bolters aren't on the list of weapons you can swap for shrapnel guns. Why not? <laughs> that is the question. Isn't it the question? Why not? Given that a combi bolter is two bolters strapped together to one trigger, you should be able to take shrapnel bolts for a combi bolter. However, it's not on the list, so technically you can't. Also... Drop pods. Deathstorm drop pods have to deploy via orbital assault drop. Uh, they cannot be deployed via orbital assault drop. They are automatically wrecked. I have a question. Because that, that makes no fucking sense to me. Like, they could not play test that? Like, nobody saw this when they were reading the rules? Yeah. I, that a lot of these things are just, we forgot to put uh, a specific instance of the thing. In the list of things. I need. I need something. So it's again. It's it's like like the 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 death storm drop pods. They, the orbital assault, right of war lists, drop pods, dreadclaw drop pods, dreadnought drop pods, and charybdis assault claws, but not death storm drop pods. Death storm drop pods have a rule that say they can't come in via any other thing than orbital assault drop 
and all the other drop pods in uh, an orbital assault, uh, drop pod assault rides of war come in via drop pod assault. So the death, death storm drop pods would have to come in via drop pod assault and they can't do that so they automatically wreck. It's like... Makes no sense. No, it doesn't. Well, but hey. yeah, yeah, they'll they'll correct it. Um, me enough, and a sure. couple of other people have sent them an email to their FAQ address, going, "Why this no work?" Hey, FAQ people, WTF FAQ? <laughs> yes, release me my FAQ tomorrow. Actually, don't because then I will feel compelled to paint. Five drop pods, three dreadnought drop pods, two contemptors, and then worry yeah. about my assault claw in a week and a half. And no. Nope. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'd like to do other things with my next couple of weeks other than paint drop pods non stop. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. I think after I've finished painting these two apothecaries and this big hammer man, I'm going to paint some Stormcast for a bit to just unwind. Just <laughs> paint something different. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, we'll get to in a minute. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about yeah my. Uh... What have you been working on? Now that I've stopped talking. Shit. That's a good question. I definitely, we'll need to look at my list because I. Uh... Well, so I've. Uh started so I was painting no that's the wrong freaking thing that I'm opening of course Deep on let's see all right so uh, last time I was talking about Anvil industry and their drone yeah, the, thing the drone yeah. so I started playing with that which is a lot of fun but man a freaking rabbit hole because there are so many options and stuff like yeah it, it's gonna it's gonna take a while to go through it all and decide what to do that's also one of the big thing is I'm not still not a hundred percent sure what I'm gonna what type I'm gonna do I know I want to do a flying one but now with the space station zero I might also do a few that are just either levitating or with the spider legs, because I think that looks pretty cool. But anyway, so I played with that. Um, well, so with my 3D printer, one of the things that I've been making a lot of is a the the stuff. Oh, shit. The it's um it's a bar that I put on my door so that the dog doesn't uh, get into the kids room because they have still some uh, plush animals and stuff like that which doggy yeah. likes to grab and rip apart so to avoid that there is a bar that I put that I designed that I put on the on the door on the door where the little thing is popping out and at that and then it grabs into the keyhole and well the door hand well the door whole thing and basically just the cats can get in the dog cannot and the doors are not fully closed so I wanted to print one of those because one broke uh, and I ended up spending 45 minutes cleaning my printer because <laughs> I realized that my nozzle was dirty as hell uh, and everything so once in a while that's the thing with printers and with the FDM printer especially it's like once in a while you really have to decide to do some maintenance on them like proper Cleaning, removing the nozzle, cleaning up everything, and maybe ch changing the nozzle or some pieces or stuff like that. But anyway, um, so I painted an Infinity guy, this guy, which 
I hate it. It's not bad, but I just hate it. Do you hate the model or do you hate the paint job? I hate the paint job. It's... it's... it... I use contrast and I should not have. Because I want, you know, flashy colors and stuff and I think that... Contrast work, but not in that case. So... Can um, I interest you? In some of this wonderful product. <laughs> Pin remover. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got uh, LA Totally Awesome that uh, yeah. this guy is going to dip into. He's going to go have a bath. Yeah, I need to buy a new Sonic Cleaner also at some point. Which sucks because that's not really in the plan of things I want to spend money on. I want a new computer. Don't want a new freaking Sony cleaner. So I've been putting money on the side, hoping that I can get a computer and that I will be able to record better because then I will move the computer that's in the office here instead and use that to record and everything, which should be fine. It's old, but it's it was really 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 good when I bought it so it's still okay now and um, yeah so that sucked <laughs> then I did another guy this guy which I started doing camouflage on it and then that pissed me off because it didn't look at all the way I wanted so this guy became all gray <sighs> then I worked on some Zono Alpha guy the blue people, yay, my blue people, my uh, smurfs, those are fine, I actually uh, finished those, so I'm glad, well, they still need to do the base, but uh, I actually like finished all the weapons and everything that were not done yet, so that was okay, I was happy with that. Um, I did some terrain pieces, which I was really happy about, they turned out great, uh, from the Spectre Miniature Patreon. And so, I don't... It's not Digital Forge, but it's something similar. They, they named it some... Uh, you know, like, it's not Spectre Patreon, but it's kind of the same. You know, it, it's a... It's not Spectre Miniature, whatever. They gave it another name, which is their, basically, their Patreon and their um, uh, 3D printed model. So, uh, because of that, they also had a whole bunch of new stuff uh, last month, which I need some resin. The resin is arriving on the 10th, so in the meantime I started doing some plates where I put some minis on uh, on plates on the slicer and uh, as soon as the resin arrives I'm gonna start just printing those. Press go! Uh, well, yeah, not, not that easy, but yes, <laughs> while well, resin is a lot easier. Uh, then, because of that, I was getting fed up. I could not, just could not paint. I just had no, like I wanted to paint models, but I had no idea how. <laughs> I just was in a, a drought when it came to color scheme, which we will talk about in in our main subject and so I decided to grab the Stargrave models that I already had and make a whole bunch of new ones because I had about I think six of them or something like that six seven and I had some that were pre-built that were the the soldier from when I did I think I did a video on uh, just the boxes themselves I might have done a video if not then I have 
the files and I should make a video and I should put it together. I don't I don't even know if those were good or anything. I might have just not done it because I was still figuring out my uh, cameras and stuff at the time. But anyway, so made those, primed those and starting painting them. And like I said, I have been having a lot of fun and it's really nice to have something different to paint. Mm. And so my medical officer for Stargrave was already a guy with the Zoiberg tentacle thing. And so I went with it and painted it pink. It's not ice pink, but it still kind of looks like it. So that was funny. And then my uh, captain, commander, whatever, is going to be in, in, Star, in uh, Space Station Zero. Really look like Kirk. So I decided to paint him like Kirk. And I think it's super funny. And now I'm painting uh, Groot. That looks like... Uh, well, I'm painting a soldier that's going to look like a rocket raccoon. So that's funny. And then I don't know. <laughs> we'll see with the rest of them where we were talking earlier. Probably one of them will uh, gonna be bored look like <laughs> because it's got the the weird eyepiece and he kind of looks like a Borg. So probably we'll paint him the same colors with this. Resistance the, is futile. Yeah, with the with the grayish grayish yellow um greenish grayish skin <laughs> mm. looking uh nice and uh weird so yeah definitely we'll go that route uh so yeah so that that was kind of what i was doing now corvus game terrain came out today with the space station zero tiles that he was working on which he calls uh, space station Epsilon or something like that and uh, so I started printing and one is printing right now so and that's gonna be so there is bottom tiles yeah I mean I I, I turned around from finishing making my dinner uh, and I saw a tweet from you like it's on the go yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, his, I know, you know, I'm not, I don't have to worry. Like, I know that I put it at uh, 70 millimeter per second, uh, 0 to, 0 to uh, millimeter height for the print details. And I turn it on and it's going and I don't really have to worry about. So that's one of the things that I know. Don't need to put supports, don't need to do any of that crap. Uh, you, the way he paints and, and the way he designed his stuff. Unless he tells you specifically this needs support. There is, you know, it, it, it's pretty much uh, put on the plate, print, plate, done. So... So I started doing that. It's going to freaking take a long time because the way it's structured, um, there is a bottom plate that are, that's where the linking mechanism is. Then there is a, so you have the bottom plate. That's how they all interconnect together with the little uh, locks thing, which it's, the same, uh, the open lock that you can find online. A lot of things are built using open lock. Um, so you have that, and then so on top of it, you put a basically not a ring, but a square, just the border, you know, like a picture frame kind of thing. And then in the middle, you can switch different plates that are going to represent a, a vent or hole or docking bay or this or that or different you know different types of um, uh, tile so that's kind of the way it is 
So right now I'm printing one bottom piece just the outside this the locking mechanism basically and that's gonna take five hours so I need 20 of those so yeah that's gonna take a while uh, once those 20 are done then I'm gonna start doing what goes on the outside and what goes on the inside and the pr I should start try to think about putting my other printer on because it is bigger and I could probably print two at the same time uh, but it's not it's not as tuned in as this one so that's my problem is like I don't want to waste and I do not have a second thing of filament it doesn't take that much filament it's like 34 grams so it's not that much so I'm gonna need 600 grams roughly for the bottom and then the top I don't know but yeah that that probably that spool is not gonna be enough so mm -hmm. but you know it again like by the time that spool is done uh, and I'm done printing that that spool is almost brand new so the next one um, well, I was not planning on getting one because I'm getting subscription for that. Uh, and I decide if I want it every every other month. And then on some months I say, no, I don't want it, blah, blah, blah. So I will see if I have to get one earlier than anticipated. But we'll see. So, yeah, that's pretty much all that I've done. And I'm currently doing. So yeah. Oh, and I still worked on my game, and I'm still not happy where my combat is. So I probably I've been thinking while I lay down in bed and trying to fall asleep. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, what if I do this? What if I do that? What if I add this there? What if I do that? And then I start playing with dice, and then I start playing with Excel table with dice and stuff, and yeah, it's fun though. I love it, but it I am not where I want to be at. It's there's, it's it's the skills of your fighter are not well represented. Does that make any sense? It's like if you had, you know, like, well, if I take this example. The similitude. Well, if I take this example, you know, it's like, oh, this guy is really good. He's a, you know, he's a soldier. He's really good. So when he's getting shot at, he can dodge really well. But then he's using gun X. So if is using this gun and this other guy is using the same gun they'll shoot the same way when one is a trained soldier the other one is a medical officer so that makes no fucking sense so that's where my issue is right now is that that's kind of what my problem is is I have I have stats that don't make sense in that way because it does not matter if your guy is good or not, just because he's using weapon X or Y is gonna do X or Y weapon stat. Yes, he might have an ability that says plus one or well, minus one to roll to uh, to hits and stuff like that, but it still not. It makes no sense as far as like it, it just does not. It does not work for me so so yeah so I'm reworking that at the moment and that's what I've been focusing on and I don't it I don't want it to be rolling because I had something but then you're like well you can roll up to like 10 dice and then I'm like no I don't want it to I don't want people to roll that many dice 
So I'm trying to, now I'm like, I need to revise some of the stats so that it drops down to even 8 maximum, I think, would be. I don't think I'd go that far. 4, 5, 6, 4, 7, plus 1 if you have a special ability add. So 8 would be probably where I'll stop at. So anyways, so yeah. That's uh, that's kind of where I'm at. And so, while I was going through my issues with not being able to freaking paint, it got me thinking, and this is our main topic. And I'd like to know what you do to get over the issue that we're going to talk about. So, like I said, painted this guy. Wanted to paint that guy, painted this guy, hated the freaking paint job on it. Just could not be inspired. The colors just don't... They, they color clash with each other. It just does not make sense. It horrible. Then I painted this other guy, which can, I cannot even find because it's so freaking bland. That, yeah, it just... It, it, I started doing camo. I wanted to do like uh, urban camo on it. And then it just like went... Bleh. And it just nope. And the also when that happened, I started making and 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 I think that's a good way to go. Is is um, so? First of all, I went into building instead. Yep. And so I built some of the Stargrave guys um, for a new game. Now I went to the. I went also to the forum on uh, Facebook, the Facebook page for Space Station Zero. I went through the book again, and especially, you know, stared at the cover, and because <laughs> there's not a lot of cover inside, but there is the there is no co color at all inside, but there is that mm. that cover that is really colorful, and I was like, all right. This is my. This has to be what I need to inspire at, like something that's colorful, that's different to what I'm painting usual, usually. Yeah. Uh, and and so. And like I said, after that, I grabbed that uh, medical officer that I had planned for so freaking long, for Stargrave, uh, and I went all right. This is gonna be pink. That guy is gonna be pink, and then somehow I went with the blue, and the different colors of blue. Then the gun, I was like, I need that to be like just colors popping and everything. And then I was like, Oh my god! I was like really happy. I had not been happy about painting a mini in a long time. Like this, this guy, like I was for this guy, and I'm like, Ah, oh, this just turned out great. And. And then I was like, oh, I should keep going. And then I was looking at the guy and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to be Kirk and, and all this. And now, like, I'm just taking this to every single one of those guys is going to be looking like a TV show, movie, TV show, uh, sci-fi dude. And so, yeah. So, now, all right. You paint armies yes for stuff that have lore right more than yes so is that easier as far as finding a color scheme because you're like oh these these guys are that they usually dress like this like this that's their color that's the one i'm gonna go with. so for for Her horus heresy uh the legions have an established color palette yeah that's why and yeah. Yeah, so there's there's a little bit of variation in shades and hues and yeah, but you don't really have to worry about what color you're gonna paint. It's kind of like no. when I was painting uh, Marvel, you know, like yeah, you can you can do because they've had different costumes and whatever, you know, like different suits. Uh, where they were, you know, in that universe or that universe. So you have a couple of different variation, but most of them you're like, all right, 
this guy I'm pinching him like this because that's the way it is on the box and because that's the way it is in the comic book yep so but does that at some point you're like okay I need to just grab a model and paint something different and paint something that does not follow any rules or anything like this it does that happen to you like you're so like my, okay my, I'm, I'm done my with storm it. My Stormcast are uh, a custom color scheme. Okay. So I came up with those colors in that particular combination. Yeah? Yeah, but after so, painting like 20 of them, are you like, oh, fuck, I'm done? Well, there's... If you paint a different unit... Okay. They've got different stuff. So... At the moment, where I've got like six drop pods to paint, mm -hmm. I'm going to paint a drop pod, and then I'm going to go paint something else. Yeah, because drop pods are boring as sin to paint. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so okay, so They're quite now... uniform. The big blank panels. No, that's so it's not very interesting. Okay, but so you decided on your color scheme, okay. Now, yeah. what if you had some like a model that just you want to paint because you just want to paint it and there's no like it's not going to be used in an army or anything. Like how would you go to just do like the color guy. scheme? I started painting a few few episodes ago. You're not gonna use it in anything. You just no. all right. Well, just... so how did you decide to paint him? Just you go with the flow. You uh, there's a little bit of going. Okay, you right. went. You this went... is what kind of this. Look at the box art, and so I can find find out like this bit's supposed to be fabric. This bit's supposed to be metal. This bit's supposed to be this. This bit's supposed to be that. And once once I've got in my head what what surface is supposed to be what mm -hmm. I go right uh, this guy so right I want his skin to be green so I want it to be this shade of green how am I going to do that shade of green I'm going to do that base coat that over the top that highlight go okay and base like with him, I basically I just vibed it, really. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think that's kind of yeah. Now, all right, when you did your army, yeah. How did you do that? How did you go by to choose your? It was was it, because you said it's your own thing, but is it still based on lore or? So the stormcast, um, I painted them up to be originally that the idea of them was. They were going to be um, from the Mortal Realms magazine. I was going to have a Stormcast army. I was going to have a Night Haunt army. And those were going to be the armies that I just used to teach people the game. Okay. And then I was like, oh, I really like playing Stormcast. And it spiraled out of control from there. <laughs> um, but while I was doing that, I was like, right, okay. They can be the Lost Legion Storm host because our club is Lost Legion Wargaming Hitchin. Yeah. So, I took the club logo, which is like a um, a blue Roman tower shield mm -hmm. with gold decorations and red banners across the top and bottom with a name in. Okay. So, I was like, right, blue, gold, red. Those are my colours. So that's blue, red, yellow, essentially, which are your primary colours. Bish, bash, bosh, done. And I was like, right, I'm going to have... Because the the logo has blue as the primary colour, has gold as the trim, and has red as the fabric, right, I'm going to do that. Okay. And it worked, so... <laughs> Bob's your uncle. I kept doing that. And th the only trouble I had with that was going on to um, doubling up 
squads. So right, okay, so I need to do a different colour other than red for the fabric on these to, to differentiate them. So okay. one was green, one was a, a darker blue. Mm -hmm. So I've got a, a like a mid metallic blue for the armour. And then there's a, a dark blue for the, the fabric on the other units. So I just sort of pulled what felt natural mm -hmm. off my paint rack. Okay. Just went with it. Yeah, yeah. No, and I think that, yeah, it, it just, it was weird for me because it was just like, all of a sudden I was like, oh my god, I just cannot be bothered. Mm. I, I, I just, I'm... Um, I have an idea. I want to paint something. I paint it, and it just yeah. looks like. So crap. I've, I've I've had <laughs> I I've had like, that. Oh, I mean, on. like the um, when I got the what was it the Lord Arcanum on, on Griff Charger from the um, the Mortal Realms set, which was in the second edition starter box mm -hmm. for Rage yeah. of Sigma. I was like, right, I know how I'm going to paint the dude. And I know how I'm going to paint all like the the saddles and the barding and all of that on the Griff Charger that he's riding, but I don't know what I'm going to do with the Griff Charger. So I went, uh, a nice contrasting colour to that is green. And then I picked a, a green contrast paint off the shelf. I went, blap. And then I painted all the, the, the claws and the beak on the Griff Charger and I looked at it and I went, I don't like it. That looks like shit. <laughs> yep. Yep. So all my other Griff Chargers from then on have been uh, a grey colour. Okay. So I went from picking a contrasting colour to a neutral colour. Yeah. No, and that's, I mean, yeah. Then, and I mean, you can go also. And so for people who don't know, you can find something like this. Yes. What's that? I don't have one of those. I just sort of go. That's a color wheel. And so, well, one is mixing color, which, I mean, if you've been doing this shit long enough, you know exactly how to mix color. Now, the one that's interested, interesting is the complementary colors. So, there is a couple, and I'm, and you can see it on the camera, but basically you have either two complementary colors three which is gonna be for example I'm pretty sure I'm not doing complementary color on my stuff but if I put my orange well actually yeah my orange got a split between blue green if I want to do a triad uh, no actually if I want to do a triad violet blue and yellow green which eh, yeah I'm there because my blue is pretty dark uh, there's a split complementary, which would be, if I take the red, then it would be a orange, would be my split, but those are going to be close together, and so on and so forth. And you can figure out what color, like you were saying, either are close together or are completely uh, on the other side of the spectrum. And so, yeah yeah that's another thing and and not and definitely i mean a lot of people talk about color theory and all this and yes if you want to pay a paint a model that uh you want like, i never paid and, attention in art class so i'm just vibing this shit oh uh, i know i was always bad in art class i can never do anything so yeah it's not <laughs> but i like painting minis and i do sometimes look at the wheel and i kind of know it by now and there's stuff that you know will work together yeah so and sometimes you won't like like this guy um i followed the color of star trek and i was like man the 70s were fucking dull <sighs> jeez because he's got the yellow shirt and a black pants and done so I started adding accents of colors, like the gun yeah. is red and orange, he has an orange Which is why thing. their uniforms started changing as soon as they started broadcasting in color. 
<laughs> but at the beginning, I mean, that was just ridiculous. Like it, it, it was funny to see all the pictures, and they were just like, eh, yeah, no. Like his his shirt sometimes look more yellow, uh, yellow green than actual supposed to be like gold. The, and, oh the, my the, God. the first the first season of uh, the original series of Star Trek, he had a, a, a like a green tunic. Yeah, that was just rather than yeah. the yellow shirt that he had he had in the second and third seasons. Yeah, so it, it was that, that's it was just funny. That's, That's just evolution in the wardrobing. Oh no, yeah, for sure. You know, and and then you see, well, you know, they kept they kept the same like single color type of things, but it it's uh, so yeah, it's funny. What you're looking at? What's going on? Uh, somebody's sending some stuff to me on Discord, and I'm uh, waiting for shades to dry. So having a look at that. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm gonna need to let that contrast paint on his head dry as well uh, before I do anything else. So yeah, uh, so that's, yeah, that's that was yeah. It, it that's up. It was funny, like yeah. I, I just it's been a long time since I had that. Yeah. Uh, I was just like so getting so I'm, frustrated, uh, and this a is lot of times if, if I'm getting yeah. bored painting like a squad then I've got, like, another squad or another character on the table that yeah. I can just pick those up. Or if I'm re really bored with doing those, I've got some terrain I can do. If I can't be bothered doing any of that, I've got a load of crap under my desk that I can build. Yeah, no, yeah. And the, and, and, and we go back to what we were saying, like, yeah, if you want to if you wanna do a hobby streak, sometimes you're, um, you know, it, it is something that you need to do, is you need to change scenery, change what you're doing and build some terrain build a model paint something different um yeah. i don't know do some 3d stuff like i do uh if you want to um like you, you got you got options there's stuff out there i mean you can do you can do bases if you want like there's nothing to prevent you from just grabbing a base and be like hey let me just start putting cork on it and little details and skulls and stuff and at the end you might be like oh this is so cool i can use it for this and this and that but while you're doing it you just might not know exactly why you're doing it but yeah it, it's and that's kind of like yeah it, it, you need to you need to be able to do that to just disconnect properly all right well while this dude dries a little bit let me go through my uh, news, news. So, um, Everybody news. Jeez. So, War Crow, which we talked about before, which I talked about before, Deep. is gonna be the new um, Corvus Belly fantasy game. So it's their it's their Infinity. Well, it's their new Infinity stuff. Well, I don't know if it's gonna uh, rule wise. I don't know, but. Let's just say they're they've been doing the guys who make Infinity have yeah, started been to make a, a fantasy game. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of sci-fi, and now they're starting doing uh, the thing. Now they we were talking about last time their roadmap was that they basically were gonna come up with a dungeon crawler, Fall Twenty Two. Well, guess what? It is Fall Twenty Two. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they are they have a link and I don't know when it's launching exactly but they do have a link where you can register to be informed when their Kickstarter go live so they will do a Kickstarter like they did for Defiance like they did for the mech thing game that they had also don't remember the name tag I think they were called the big robot thing that people were inside and fighting and there was a giant uh, worm thing that was coming out of the ground and all that. Pause. So that, uh, so that, they're coming up with that Kickstarter and we're going to see what they will do with that. Uh, now. Uh, people that are playing 
uh, Space Station Zero knows that they know that there is two big types of enemies. Oh, shit. One is a robot, derelict robot, basically, and some drones and stuff like that. And the other one is mutant. And so when I saw the next installment of uh, Anvil Industry uh, Patreon, they are going to do some mutant. And they look pretty cool. They're going to be modular. I asked the guy. I'm like, yeah, are those going to be? Because uh, some of them have guns, but in the games, they don't have guns, the mutant. So uh, they're just nasty close combat things. So you need to shoot them before they get to you with their big claws and tentacles and shit. So... Um, I'm looking forward to having those and being able to uh, 3D print them. So, yeah. So, if you want to, again, right now, still ongoing for a few days. By the time this comes out, it's going to be probably too late. But you might be able to grab it. Uh, the drone thing is still ongoing for this month. And then next month, it's going to be the mutant. And from what they were showing, um, there's some really nice options. And, and it's going to be fun one. Um, and the last, well, no, uh, Star Wars, The Clone Wars Pandemic. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, what? Pan pandemic? <laughs> so, it's actually, they should not call it Pandemic, they should, it, should call it uh, Star Wars, The Clone War, a pandemic system play or board game or whatever you want to call it. Because basically, they use the same principle of Cooperative game, and then threats popping up and spreading. Yeah. So now there's other stuff in there. There is some combats now also that you're going to have to do. Uh, there are a few miniatures, which probably already uh, popped up on the screen. Darth Maul. You got Darth Maul, Ventress, uh, Dooku, Dooku, and... Venus. And Grievous, and then the good guys, you've got Yoda, Ahsoka, uh, Obi-Wan, you've got... Anakin. Anakin, yeah. Mace Windu. Mace Windu. I don't know who that is on the front left or the back right. Uh, back right, she's the... Uh, uh, yes. I've not watched a lot of Clone Wars, I, so... I, I know who she is, I just don't... Uh, I don't have her name anymore. But yeah, so they're gonna be, you know, it's, it's gonna be one of those where you're just gonna be just uh, going around and then try to fight the separatist, right? Separatist? The robots? Yep. So, yep. and you're gonna just try to prevent them from taking over the galaxy. And the board is, instead of being a country, it's a galaxy, different planets. You're gonna be moving from planet to planet, same. Some of them will have powers like you have for uh, when you play a game of uh, of uh, Pandemic. So yeah, I thought that was pretty fun. It's in pre-order now. It's coming out the October seventh. It retails for sixty bucks, which is an okay price for a board it's game. Not bad. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I was not expecting. I was not expecting anything below 50. There is the minis, I think that's why. I, I was hoping more towards like 49.99 kind of bull crap, but uh, so yeah. Um, then one thing that, so Curse City, there is an expansion. Never heard of it. <laughs> well, no, you heard of it, then you never heard of it, then you heard of it. Isn't oh, that how yes, it's supposed to be? <laughs> yep. yeah, so, yeah. You, you heard of it, then it just never existed, and then you heard of it again. But it was the first time you heard of it. Yep. <laughs> and now there is an expansion for it. <laughs> uh, Night Wars. Now, one of the Hashtag things... Hashtag no minis. That's the thing that I was going to say. I'm like, WTF, when I saw this... So it's going to be, what, 30, 30 quid... Yeah. Which is thirty dollars, which is thirty euros right now, pretty much. Everybody's on the uh, set. Mm -hmm. 
Dude, the, dollar the, the, is the, pa- dollar... the pound. The pound's doing a nosedive at the moment. So the, the dollar is above the euro right now. I was surprised because I was like, "Oh, eight hundred and sixty-six euros for a quote." I was doing, and then I was like, "How many dollars is that? Eight hundred and fifty something?" And I'm like, "What? It's supposed to be the other way around." <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, the pound and the dollar and the euros are pretty much the same. So yes. Uh, We'll see, but anyway, so it's not going to stop Games Workshop charging you through the nose for it if yeah, you don't yeah, live in the well, UK, yeah. though. So, so we'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, now, there is a site called TableGaming.co.uk, so British, and they came out with some awards for their 2022 Table Top Gaming Awards, and I thought there was some pretty good stuff in there, so I decided to um, go through them. I'm gonna go fast because some of them we don't either don't know or don't care. Uh, baseboard game 2022 Arc Nova, not surprised. Um, saw a lot of things on it. Really want to buy it. Probably will go with Cascadia before I go for this. So again, Cas- I think Cascadia is will be perfect for my family. I think this one might be a little bit too heavy. Not for the kids as in too heavy like of they won't know what to do no because they've been playing board games since they like freaking five years old so no it's just gonna take fucking three hours to finish the freaking game yeah and this is kind of like yeah if it was a two-player game fine if you're playing like four or if we have a friend coming five no cascadia yes we can play five no problem and it's still gonna take probably an hour this will take forever. So, yeah. Uh, base war game. Oathmark. So, that was surprising. Uh, but the new rules, the new... They came up with a new set of rules, right? This year? Updated yeah. rules? Uh, and so, I think that's, that... a, that's a clean sweep from Osprey on best war game. Fuck, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, yeah. The it It's... The runner-up, I mean, yeah, it, it's all Osprey. Osmark, Osprey, runner-up, Silver Bayonet, love it. Uh, Osprey Games, Lion Rampant, Osprey Games. I was like, come on, really? <laughs> then you go to Best Miniature Games, Stargrave. Really? <laughs> Osprey again. Uh, Sniper Elite, the board game. I'm... Which is in miniatures so... game and not board games. Yeah, I was surprise it was there but again like mixed feeling about that one uh base card game radland no idea what that is never heard of it art robbery flip them all the best card game i have no clue base trading card game flesh and blood uprising never uh, heard of it. that if you follow uh covenant uh they do a lot of card games and so yeah i knew about that one but yeah uh, I've heard of Magic the Gathering. You've heard of Magic the Gathering. Well, this one was Kamigawa, Neon yeah. Dynasty, which is the the, 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 the last the time last... I played I don't know, Magic this, the Gathering. Are these seasons or Magic the Gathering? Or they, uh, just... they have sets. Sets, okay. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, they, some of them call them seasons, some of them call them sets, some of them yeah. call them, like, I don't know, freaking whatever. It used to be you had three sets in a block. Okay. And the last time I played magic was during the first kamigawa block Shit. and that was okay that was that was that was interesting it was um spirits onis elementals and it was it kamigawa is their japanese themed plane okay. that was fun so i think i think this one's more of a cyberpunk thing now uh well speaking of cyberpunk news uh netflix animated series yes. cyberpunk that's uh, driven a lot of people to go back to the game from what i hear yes now the game is number one selling on steam which yeah. is fucking weird <laughs> but the, because the... They, they, they put a, a really good advertisement out for it and called it an anime it is good the anime yeah. is good i started watching it is is it reminds me a lot of ghost ghost in the shell hmm uh but a lot more bloody so fun um best solo game batman best role-playing game 
Did I you miss? skipped a couple. Uh, base role playing game, Pathfinder, second edition. It's D and D. They need to stop yeah. calling it a different name. It's just. <laughs> but anyways, Pathfinder, from what I hear, is really good. If you want to play D and D, Pathfinder is actually what is it like three point five? They it's kind of like thirty k. They stopped also Pathfinder and they went a different way and <laughs> they split and yeah. Uh, ch -ch -ch best indie game, Regicide. No idea. Long shot, the no, best game, Mini Rogue. All those games, indie games. I have no clue. Uh, I'm surprised indie game that uh, things like Rain in Hell and things like this are not mentioned. Uh, I think there's some good indie game. Um, Five Par Six from Home really work well. Um, the other one was uh, Psalm. The Psalm game, what is it called? Ugh, anyways. Uh, so yeah. Best solo game, Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Um, seen it, don't... Didn't know it was a solo game, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't... Not sure. Party game, uh, Blood on the Clock Tower. Don't know, sounds fishy. I think that one I know. The other one, Last Message. Don't know. Uh, best way to die in an RPG. <laughs> that one was a weird thing, but Call of Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yeah, Cthulhu. 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 That one. Yeah. Cthulhu. Uh, best intergenerational game award. Cora Quest. I so don't know what that means. Well, intergenerational game means uh, best way to play with your kids. Ah, okay. Because Cora Quest... So, Cora Quest. I have Cora Quest. I backed it on Kickstarter. Um, it's a dungeon crawler. Everything was done by kids. The artwork was basically drawn by kids, then redrew better, but with the same weird kids drawing where you have kids that are like a five or six year old drawing a character um great little fun dungeon crawler you pull tiles and you go and you fight monsters and everything played with my kids they loved it uh so yeah really really uh it not surprised it's there uh most noble component award the dark tower return to dark tower restoration game so restoration game they've done reboot of very old board games so they did uh, uh forbidden island no um uh ah the the thing with the fireball island where you have the little ball that rolls and breaks the bridge and topples you guy and that we had when we were kids there so they did a reboot of that which is a lot better they modified the rules and so on dark tower was a tower that used to be so you had a big tower in the middle and there was some electronic in it and it depending on like you would put something in it and it would spit it out in some way. And so they re they redid the entire tower with full of electronics and stuff control with your phone and so on. Um, and so yeah. Started backing it and then pulled out. Glad I did because I don't think it's something that yeah, it's not something that I would love to um to actually play it it doesn't look it looks heavy for what it is uh, outside of the box award surprise for speed paints they're not out of the box they're pretty much contrast there, we paint. saw what <laughs> citadel were doing and we went yeah. in on that well and I really whether or not they did it better or not is uh, your money really well this is the thing and 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 I am actually interested in an this is not in my news, and I freaking should have mentioned it. Vallejo came up with yes. some Speed paints. paints. Yeah. And they called them... I have no freaking idea. Did I talk about those last time? Maybe. Uh, Might have. Vallejo. Uh, speed. Yeah, contrast paints, speed paints. Uh, they called them... I don't remember. Army paint or speed paints. 
and so I've watched some videos and so the guy one of the it's a Spanish guy he's a great paint like he's a great painter and he was talking about it and he was talking uh, about Vallejo game color the game color is what I have uh... so uh... Did you, did you put contrast paint Vallejo? That you I'm should. on the Vallejo website. It's not on their website yet. <gasps> it's contrast paint Vallejo. Let's see. Uh, new Express. So X yes. Express X P R E S S color paints. So I watched those. And the guy was that actually helped develop them was talking about them, and he was saying like so. He used, for example, a Racklin flesh tone equivalent, and mm. he started putting it on the mini, and then he went, wicked his brush, and came back, and it. He was saying they take longer to dry that contrast paint. But that means that you can go back and prevent and like push Move them it around away, a little bit, yeah. push them around a little bit more. And actually, like he ended up with a, the guy had you know like big muscles and everything, and the top was nice, like not blotchy, and the recess was really darkened because he did this. Then he also there are mixable with water. Mm. So you can reactivate it. You well, you actually dilute them with water, and they still right. act the same way. And that was really also surprising because it's like, yes, we will have medium, like express medium, uh, but and he was showing, and he basically so so he did the body, and then he took a dark blue violet color, mixed it with water, and did kind of a wash. And then did that into the recesses to even accentuate even more like so the skin with the pink and the dark recess like the that um, the more Racklin flesh tone kind of thing you know darken and everything and then also violet and blues and things like this just to accentuate like the knee and all these things and and to he was doing basically a glaze and filters using those but mixing them with water and I was like super. Of course, the guy is super fucking, you know, he's got a level that's yeah. way up there. But he, you know, he was not doing like a, a brush stroke that you go, yeah, dude, I can never do a brush stroke like this. He was literally going, shloof, shloof, put, you know, dropping it, dunk, dunk, pushing it. It, what it was doing was not, you know, it's not like he was doing some kind of, um, you know, like, um, yeah. yeah you know feathering or any like stuff like that where you look and you're like or um wet blending or anything like this it was not doing any of those techniques that you look and you go yeah of course you're pushing your paints and thing, you say, like if if it dries on the model slower then you can do the wet blending on the model yes and a and lot honestly, easier like, you can, really, you, you like, can like, kind was... of do that with contrast paint but you, you need to be swift about it. Yeah, no, and this one he was saying, yeah, you know, like, they, they don't dry as well as blah, 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 as the contrast paint. And the guy was saying, you know, he's like, I'm not saying they're better than contrast paints. This is not what we're saying. They're different. And, yeah. you know, like, you can do this and this with it. And, and there is a video that you can find. Let me see. There is a video that you can find... A, a, that this guy is painting and honestly like take a look at it because i was really impressed and i am really looking forward <laughs> to having those and i uh there are 24 colors i think okay he was saying so pretty much like uh spin paint the first the first batch yeah uh and the guy was, this is the thing also, like he was saying, like right now I don't have all the colors, but I have enough colors that I can mix them together and do the colors that I want. And they look like they're all the same. Viscosity, consistency, 
they all look the same, which is not. Yeah, this that's one of which the which is the, not the case. The for downsides freaking... for like at least Ugh. I've not got any of the new contrast paints, but like the the first contrast oh paint my wave. God, like you go from a one lot to of them worked just, very yeah. differently to yeah. each other, and it was yeah. you had to, you basically had to learn how each each one individual yeah. one worked, and that's something that the spin paint seems to not have that issue. Yeah. They seem to be also a little bit more consistent. But, so yeah, yeah. I, that, I'm I'm guessing that they fixed that for the the second wave for of the contrast wave, as well. Yeah. well but I've, might, I've not might, personally used any of those. So and I they might really fix it that. for the one that are currently out. Also, they might come up with you yeah. know like a, not a rebranding but a, an updated version of it or something. Yeah. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be well, and that's uh, that's my that's news. You. That's my news with even a bonus news that was not in the original thing. So, here you go, people. Right. Do you want to see some new shiny toys? Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> do, I, do I want to? Do I need yeah. to? Yeah. Do I want to? I mean, to? you can. Let me see. Which so, one? Which one are we? First one. We're going to start at the top. There is a new season freaking load. of Warhammer Underworlds. No, I'm just going to talk for a bit while, while you get that to load. Underworld? Warhammer Underworlds. So uh, yes. it's uh, the Knollwood, which is the setting for the new edition of Warcry. Uh, is that, the, is that the, the, the trees that are alive and, and kicking yeah. and, and look weird and want to grab yeah, you? That's and the meat trees. And... Yep. Uh, so and there's not, not Russian, no. Dimitris, Dimitris, Meet. Dimitris, Dimitris. Okay, just let me hang up. <laughs> Come on, I'm a dad. I need to do dad jokes. So there are two new war bands in here. There is the Null Spirit Pack. Uh, they're regular human chaos dudes and they've got all sorts of skulls on their heads and big stompy hammers and right, stabby spears which one do i look english francais dutch italiano espanol scroll down just look at the pretty pictures wow that's no that's a i like their boards i think it's a good gateway game they don't okay i like this guy with the staff let's see the guy with the Ooh, i like the guy with the hammer holy shit that's cool is that a helmet yes holy moly he's got a bug head oh helmet. that is super cool made with not bug stuff because he's got fake handlers stuck to his Cool. Yeah, I mean, the other guy's gone out and are stuck to the top of his star, so... Oh, she looks fucking scary. Yep. Double axe welding, wielding. Oh, uh, why does she have children freaking baby faces on her knees? Oh, that's just wrong. Oh, that just looks wrong. That looks super cool. <laughs> that looks wrong, but super cool. Alright, I like those. Alright, I really like those. And the second warband in there is the Sons of Velmorn. Which and are... they are skelly bobs. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. I like those two. So Ooh, I've I like often the, said like that the the, uh, the Warhammer Underworlds oh, Warbands nice. is where the the, the oh, miniatures fuck. design team goes to have fun. Oh my god, that one with the shield. Oh, you look so cool. And the race. Well, the sword. guy, the guy with the, the no with the, with the giant, the, the sword raised yeah. up. Yeah. That one is look cool. Yeah, and I like the halberd dude. He looks like uh, the helmet is way too big for him. Well, it was not too big for him when he still had flesh. Yep. <laughs> there, that's really cool. I think that's that's usually that's something that I've never seen. They usually fit nice. Yeah. It's rare to have that. Oh yeah, it used to fit before that guy. Yeah, all, all your lost hair all, and your skin just lost fell all off. the flesh and everything, and they look. No, it doesn't quite awesome. fit right. They looked awesome. They, I, 
again, like, yeah, I can understand why, like, a lot of people just grab the minis and then use them in something else. I mean, yeah. you can use them in Warcry, right? Because it's the same You setting. can use them in War... Uh, it's not the same system. It's the no, same no, 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 setting. No, no, setting, setting. You can yeah. use them as even yeah. replacement for other... Or do they yeah. have actual stats in... Uh, they will eventually have... Um, the stats... Maybe. One for one carryover stats, but until that happens, a lot of the Warhammer Underworlds stuff is this is a named version of this particular model from this particular unit. Okay. All right. Yeah, Underworld stuff is really cool. Yeah, no, they they look. Uh, don't don't. Oh, cool. All right. Link number two. Link number two. Done. Good. Number two. Celebrate Warhammer Day with an exclusive competition, a miniature a painting competition. Blah 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 blah. We don't care about that. We want to see the mini. The mini. The Show mini. me the mini. It's not on there. Did I? Did I? I clicked the wrong. I don't see it. <sighs> I don't see it. Uh, I think what you're going to have to do is mute the video. Okay. And then play the uh, video. And then play the video. Come on. Because this is a forty thousand thirty-five years of best tall in the four future celebrity war with this with the Emperor. Oh, I've seen that one. I've seen it. The guy uh, stabbing the orky the orky dude. Yep, I've seen it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's very nice. There's some angles on that I haven't seen before, so I'm just going to... All right. Fuck. And I feel like a broken record every time I say this, but not my jam. Really yeah. cool sculpt. Really dynamic, uh, which I really like it. Uh, mini diorama type thing. Really awesome. Yeah. I mean, that that is not going to go on a table. No. But... Uh, well, you could... Yeah, I mean, it's probably but, gonna be the wrong base size for an Ember's champion, but yeah. Yeah, you're yeah it it but again like it, it's really cool, really cool, really nice sculpt. Not at all something I would buy. <laughs> <laughs> well, so how do you get those? Like the, the do you get those in stores? Uh, where you uh, have... you will be able to order it from Warhammer stores and their website uh, or you can pick one up from your local independent War Warhammer store or independent stockist between the 15th and the 23rd of October okay and they're, oh, they're also having a uh, preview stream for Warhammer 40k 35 year that birthday on the 8th at 2pm so okay Cool. That's two PM British time. So, right. I I don't know what that is in everywhere else. Uh, well, you, are you guys right now GMT or GMT plus one? We're in BST, so GMT plus one. GMT plus one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then people, after that, you can figure out where you're at. Yep. Next. Last week's Warhammer Thursday. Warhammer Thursday? Uh, Heresy Thursday. Mm. So we've got... So is um, it always Heresy Thursday? Every Thursday is Heresy Thursday now. Okay. And that makes me happy. So I have something to look forward to on a Thursday. So we've got the uh, Legion-specific prayer tours for the Death Guard. So we've got one guy in Cataphracti Terminator armor and one guy in Power Armor. Alright, I am gonna abandon you for a second. There seems to be an issue with my doggy. So okay. I need to go see what's wrong with doggy. Um, we will have yeah. a quick timeout. My tiny puppy! <laughs> Look at my tiny puppy! Oh my goodness! Dog! Oh my goodness! So that—that's my tiny puppy. 
Yeah, he's a dog. He's a proper dog. He's a good dog. <laughs> yeah, he's seventy pounds. <laughs> he's, a... he's only tiny then, yeah. yeah. Look! Oh my goodness! Yeah! Oh my goodness! No, you don't like that. It's moving. Okay. All right, we put you back. We good? All right, be right back. <laughs> no worries. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah. It was a dog. It was a dog. Doggy. He's an awesome doggy. He's a pain sometimes, but he's my doggy and he's awesome. So shut up. <laughs> no, it's I don't know. My wife was saying he was yapping, so which is not something he normally does. So that was a concern. Yes, he does. Okay. All right. Heresy, Praetors, Death Guard. One of them's in Catchfracty armor. One of them's in Artificer armor. Is a chunky boy. Uh, yeah. So the the first one is a chunky boy. He can have him unhelmeted with a weird hood thing that sort of looks a kind of a bit like the um, Mortarian model. So the the Primarch of the Death God. So he's daddy. He's kind of yeah. dressed like dad. Of course, this whole freaking thing resetted. It's uh, annoying. Why would you do that? Or well, he's right. got a helmeted head that looks a lot better. So which uh, which one are we looking at? Three. Heresy Thursday. Do, 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 do. So yeah, I was saying it's like so. Do they say like is it gonna be forever until they get until tired? they run out of things to to show off on a Thursday that are related to Horus Heresy? All right. Well, but so they've been doing what like books and stuff like that. Yeah, the, a couple of weeks ago they had um, a preview for the next book. Some of the rules for the next book. They're like, ooh, ooh stuff, books. things, ooh. ooh, books. Look at this shiny new thing. Yeah. So the uh, want yeah it. the you the Praetor's got a two. The Cataphractor Praetor's got a two-handed axe, and the uh, power-armored guy has a Man Reaper scythe and a. Combi Volta. Uh, that's the one that the funny thing they were saying is peeing in his armor. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. So why are they bone color? That's just their... That's their armor color. Okay. So it's not... It, it's, it's, it's an off-white with green bits and bronze trim is okay. their general color palette. Okay. Uh, but that... Doesn't matter which army, or is it for a specific something? That's the Death Guard Legion. Okay. So my guys are the Iron Warriors, so they're silver with black and bronze, or. But you can use this. You can use the same model. You just need to paint them differently for uh, different. This has details and stuff sculpted on that are specific to that legion so if you wanted uh, to use it for a different legion you would, would have be... to do some work okay like you just did with your guy where you just yes. put some pieces and stuff okay yeah, yeah. pretty much a head swap shave all the um there's like all the like the legion details on the shoulder pads and like the the numerals on the backpack and stuff will be like specific for for that legion so you'd have to Trim that off or fill it in or something. Okay. Makes so sense. I'm just trying to work out. I think it's a combi flamer? Plus. So let's say. Uh, no. Oh, speaking of combi flamers, did you see uh, uh, the video, the last video from. Uh, Uncle Adam? I saw his one on Friday, where he was like, there's not going to be a Friday video because my mum's in hospital. Yeah. Uh, which... I, he, he, put the, he put that Friday video out this morning when I was getting ready for work. So 
so that was well that was and i'm gonna put fucking giant quotes on it funny because thursday not this thursday the thursday yeah. before that uh we ended up in the er oh because my wife had heart attack symptoms she had like her heart was just beating her irregularly she was having tachycardia and 120 plus heartbeat where she was laying down uh so we ended up in the er because she has well she has some medication for heart and everything yeah. but nothing was working so the doctor said go to the er we went to the er and it ended up being potassium so when uncle adam was like yeah they told her to go because if she was going lower on the potassium she could have like heart issues and i was like uh, yeah, I know. My wife just had that. So, yeah. And her, she, he was saying her potassium, her mom's potassium was like at 2.3. My wife was at like 1 point something. And that's when she was starting to have like heart attack symptoms. She, she didn't have, not have a heart attack, but she was having like irregular heartbeat and all kinds of scary stuff. So, yeah. So when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, you did the right thing because that's definitely not something you want to mess with. And especially no. his mom is a lot older than my wife. So my wife yeah. was fine. Uh, and the guy was like, oh, yeah, you could have eaten two bananas and you would have been fine. And they're like, yeah, but how did, or were we supposed to freaking know Yeah. until you did the freaking blood work and figured out that that was yeah. the problem. I'm like, yeah, it's always funny. With, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Anyways. Yeah. So yeah, uh, so got... he was ta he was talking about a double flamer thing, uh, yeah. well, because he's trying to play the kill one team, isn't it? Pain, yeah. he, well, the one page rule version of kill team, using some thirty k models that he has apparently. Okay. From what so... I understood, and he was like, "Yeah, there is no." Oh, because they sent him an, an Age of Darkness box for some reason, didn't they? Probably I don't know. So yeah, he was talking about like yeah, it's uh, it's it's yeah. So yeah. So cool. I will have to watch that while so I'm uploading was, the files No, he here. was talking about a flame, a flamethrower something that was supposed to be big, but it was small and blah blah blah. But yeah, so and he was talking about one sh basically one page one page rule, which I really need to take a look at. But again, good for you, not good for me, because I have no GW things. So if you have GW things, you might want to take a look at those. Then we're looking at giants. Yeah. Eating so people. The La the Nova Open, they showed off um, a new character model for the giants, oh, which shit. turns out to be um, uh, an upgrade sprue for the current Mega Gun kit. And this looks to be additional options that will be plugging onto the same basic Mega Gun kit. That so looks, it looks it looks pretty nasty. He's got a pretty angry face. Uh, he's eating some people. Yes. He's got somebody's skull as a um, I, glass eye. prosthetic eye. Um, yeah. And eye. he's. Bon appetit. <laughs> he's 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 no, bolted no. a uh, mini to a tree and he's using that as a club. Yep. Okay. Yep. He's gonna beat you with a sharp end. Yeah. It. He looks gnarly. He's yeah. Very angry. Cool. So yeah. So what, this... what are what are the stats? Are those, those stats are for what? The. The stats on his club, uh, yeah. So he's no, but like the the stats that are on the bottom, it, it there's some stats in the pa on the page. Yeah, that that's for his. That's the weapon profile for his club. Okay, but is that for Age of Sigmar or for what? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's not like Warcry or blah blah blah. It's it's. Uh, no, he that's he would be um two entire Warcry warbands. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, it, it, true. Yeah, he would probably be uh, way. He's very large way, way and much. very in charge. Cool. 
you know, I mean, you might um, you might house rule like a scenario where um, two warbands have to team up to fight to one fight, of these yeah, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that could be funny. Because like in in Age of Sigma, these guys have thirty five wounds, and like uh, a two wound uh, stormcast in Age of Sigma has like twenty. So. Oh my god! So he would have like. 600 <laughs> something like that yeah <laughs> shit uh, that w- well that could be again yeah that could be so fun. you you well, would be there a long time there was there was the thing of the uh chimera pack where there was some in in uh yes where there was some uh but these uh, are significantly bigger yeah, yeah 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 but like you could do something similar but like you say like a double or triple warband yeah. trying to take one down on a on a way bigger board and all this so yeah cool yeah <gasps> my goodness it looks like a raccoon yay <laughs> i'm sorry i just no let's, let's see finally all right cool so yeah nice all right anything else that next one is all she wrote. Uh, that's it? Well, There is nothing else that has happened or is about to happen that I particularly care about. Uh, let's see. No, nothing that I can think of that was... Uh, that has been... That I've seen. Closed. Uh, so, yeah. Well, it is at this point... That I my, I've realised uh, my my camera has not been recording. At all? That one. Just went, nah. It recorded 13 seconds earlier when we were doing uh, <laughs> our, oh our pre checks and everything. Uh, and I pressed record and it just went, nah, can't be bothered. Is it, is it, uh, is it, and just did didn't. Try, did you try episode 3 on us? Is that what your camera did? Uh, I've not got any pictures of my brother around, so it can't be anything to do with him. <laughs> well, we're still going to blame him. Oh, absolutely. He's not here. He can't defend himself. We don't talk about Toby. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, dear, jeez. All right, well, how's your, uh, how's your model, then? What so, you- I have... Got one to the point where I just need to do the technical paints on. Okay. What do you uh, mean by technical? So he's got some vials and jars on. So I'm doing those with uh, these shiny paints. And because he's a, a field doctor, uh, yeah. he's going to have some blood for the blood god splattered up him. Okay. Um, and then his 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 triplet here. Um, I just need to do the the wash on all the the silver bits, and then all of those other things. Cool. But I can't read off of Warhammer community websites and talk to you about models that uh, we're looking at at the same time whilst painting. Whilst painting. I do not have that many hands. Alright, cool. So that is, is that. That's it. Alright, well, my guy is looking good. I managed to make his face look like a rocket. And I don't know, I'm gonna. It's gonna have to be not rocket, it's gonna have to have another name. So I don't know yet. So. Uh, Hang on. Thesaurus. Bazooka, Bazooka Raccoon. Search Thesaurus Rocket. <laughs> Self Propel Raccoon. Uh, booster. Booster Raccoon. Yep, that works. <laughs> so he's not Rocket Raccoon, he's going to be Booster. It could almost be Booster Badger because he kind of looks like a badger more than uh, a raccoon. Booster, but... Firework, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Missile. Missile, missile Raccoon. Yeah, could be. Spacecraft, Spaceship, Torpedo, Weapon. Yeah. 
I don't know. We'll so see. I think, I think, I think uh, Booster is the best one out of there. Yeah. So, Booster. Mr. Booster Raccoon. Like I said, he looks like... It looks like because Boost, if he's a badger, call him Booster Badger, then because then it still alliterates. Because the, the nose, like, you see? Yeah. yeah so, Booster Badger. Yeah, Rocket Raccoon Booster Badger. Yeah. So he's going to be Booster Badger. So, yeah. I'm I'm happy. They have like I said, I'm really having fun like just doing like I said, this guy, the next one is gonna be one of Yeah, just just doing some random models. Oh yeah. Well and and they're all gonna fit in my in my thing, but like this guy. It's like assimilate he's got the mm. thingy on the on the head so that's this guy that her i really want to she kind of look like i don't know i not sure i with the ponytail mm. so i need to find a, a lady sci-fi lady there's a monkey while well, a chimpanzee with a rocket launcher also i don't know ah shoot did I have black on it? Yes, I had black on it. So yeah, I'm gonna yeah I don't know I'll I'll see but yeah. Hopefully I can uh, find more inspiration on the models. If I have to build some new ones, I'll build some new ones. Like I did not I did not know I was gonna go TV show thing when I started. So now that I have this line of. Uh, inspiration painting <laughs> painting vibe then i'm really gonna go with it for my entire crew and so now i need to find old sci-fi movies where there is some well you can you know like planet of the apes i could do with this guy um him i want to paint like probably duke nukem yeah, from the old uh, from yeah, the yeah. old video game like that. I think that would work well for this guy. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, one is looks like a um, when uh, Luke is going into Jabba's palace dressed. He's yeah, got yeah. this weird mask. You see the 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 visor yeah. weird thing. So oh, that was uh, Leia, wasn't it? In oh yeah, no, no, yeah, it was Leia. You're right, you're right, yeah. Uh, when she was trying to get, um, she was trying Han, to get yeah. uh, Han out out of the carbonite. Yep, you're you're right. So I might do that. Like there is a few that I can, like. It's it's funny. I think that that's what they did. You know, they they put all the heads and everything of all the stuff that they that they had before. Like I said, there is this guy which has a. Uh, tarantula looking head with the pincers and everything so that's gonna be fun to paint i don't know i need to find a, a um snake uh, snake a spider people type thing so yep uh, let's do a yellow on this so yeah well thank you everybody uh we're gonna we're gonna have one recording of two hours straight. Woohoo! Uh, yeah. Minus... The only thing that went wrong was my camera decided it didn't want to record. Yes. So, so but other than hey, that... please enjoy a picture of whatever JG decides to put in that corner. Usually, what you ended up painting. So you're gonna have to send me a nice picture of what you painted in uh, port in uh, landscape mode, in the same size as the camera would be. So I don't have to uh, resize too much shit. I'm just kidding. You just send me what you want. Oh, but uh, yeah, for whatever you painted today is probably what you guys have seen the entire time on the screen. And uh, yeah, I will have to finish. I will probably the finish those up while I'm uh, uploading the uh, audio. So. Yeah, well, I, uh, so I, we had a small interruption where Doggy yeah, was Yeah, we're leaving the dog in though, right? I will, uh, I will 
pop him in and and just so that like oh, this is my doggy so yeah and uh, I am gonna go grab doggy and go run because I started running so I've uh, done three runs of the first week and this is my second week and uh, yeah hopefully my knees and everything will hold enough so that I can uh, I used to run like five miles without any problem like I used to run an hour and a half just non-stop that was before my kids were born so nine plus years ago <laughs> yeah so I started running again just to get back to not being a fat ass in a couch and yeah so again thank you everybody Hope you enjoyed. Um, let us know if you want in the comments what you do when you have a block, like a painter's block, where you don't know what to paint, when you don't know what's your preferred method to go over it. And um, yeah, hope you uh, will uh, see us in two weeks. Hopefully, I will not take that long to get this one out. I need a computer. I need a new computer. So I can edit videos a lot faster because it's just taking forever. It's annoying. Anyways, thank you, Liam. Thank you, everybody. See you next time. Adios. Bye.